Hey guys, how's it going? This is George from Deplo.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to factory reset your Mac, whether you want to sell it on eBay or if you want to have a fresh Mac right in front of you. So, look at the scenario, let's get started. Now, I remember I've done a similar video in the past, I believe it was about 4 to 5 years ago and that was definitely pretty old. Now, things have changed a lot since then and depending on whether you want to sell it or keep it for yourself, whether you want to have a fresh Mac OS installed on your Mac, there are different steps involved and there are some extra steps that you need to take if you want to sell it. So regardless of the scenario, let's go ahead and get started with the process. Okay, so one of the things that we have to do is to go ahead and deauthorize our Mac from iTunes or music or whatever you call it. And the way to do this, you have to go and open the music app and you can have to go where it says accounts at the top go where it says authorization and deauthorize this computer here you need to enter your apple id and of course your passcode and by doing this simply means that itunes will no longer be connected on this computer now apple has a limit of how many computers you can authorize this is up to five so if you're about to sell your computer and you don't deauthorize it, then chances are that it will be a lot more difficult for you to deauthorize this computer by using another Mac device. So definitely take this step, especially if you want to give away your MacBook or uh, sell it or whatever else. Now the next thing we have to do is first of all, you can close the music app and then we can go to um, system preferences and then we need to sign out from our Apple ID and iCloud. So if you want to sell your Mac, you don't want your buyer to not be able to use your Mac because they don't know your Apple ID. Now Apple has a strict rule, if you still have your Apple ID connected to your Mac, then the other person may need to enter your Apple ID credentials in order to be able to use your Mac. Now to prevent this from happening, you need to go to your Apple ID account and simply uh, sign out. So we're going to go ahead and click on where it says sign out from here. And to be honest, there's no really need to keep a copy because we're going to reset this Mac anyway. It's going to keep a copy, but it's not going to make a difference overall. You also need to deactivate find my Mac. So we're going to go ahead and enter the passcode for our Apple ID account again. And that process is going to take some time because you need to disable some other features uh, associated with your Apple ID account connected to your Mac. All right, so now the Apple ID has been um, signed out. Now we can go back iCloud as you can see has also been signed out automatically as well because iCloud is connected to your Apple ID so if you sign out from your Apple ID it's gonna disconnect you from iCloud as well now, next up what we need to do is to go ahead and check some other apps which your Apple ID is connected One of them is gonna be messages so if you open messages then we we'll go to messages on the top go to preferences and then go where it says iMessage and from here as you can see is not signed out so I'm going to just sign out from my Apple ID account because it does it didn't do it automatically. Now I'm going to just exit messages. Next up we can go to FaceTime as well and repeat the same process. Go to FaceTime, preferences and then just press where it says sign out. Looks like it didn't do it automatically. Sign out and boom again. Another thing that I will go ahead and do is to sign out from all of my emails. So we're going to go to settings and we're going to choose the option internet accounts. And then I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect, just remove all of these accounts from here. I'm just going to remove them one by one. Now, remove them. Okay, once that's done, then you have done pretty much everything you need. Then you may close for some preferences. Now that we have disconnected our Apple device from our Apple ID account and some other email accounts, now you may go ahead and disconnect your device from other online accounts that you have on your device connected. For example, if you're insecure about your privacy, then you can go ahead and disconnect yourself from Facebook, Twitter, and all the other accounts that we have made. It's not really necessary, but you can take an extra mile in order to feel even more secure. Now, I have to mention that all these steps were not necessary if you want to keep your Mac, but if you want to give it away, 
or sell it, I repeat, these steps are mandatory. You have to do them in order to not only protect your privacy, but to make sure your buyer is gonna get a Mac, which is as close as being new. All right, so there's actually one final thing I have to mention before we move on and factory reset the Mac, is that I highly recommend you to back up all of the data that you have on your Mac. Now, I assume that you haven't done this before. If you have done it, feel free to skip to the next minute in order to see how to factory reset your Mac. But if you haven't and you want to back up all of the data, then definitely follow this step. To perform a backup with a Mac is actually extremely easy, way easier than you would do by using Windows. And all you need is an external hard drive with enough storage in order to store all of the data from your Mac. For example, if your Mac came in with a 512 gigabytes of storage, definitely grab a one terabyte of SSD or external hard drive in order to be able to perform the backup storage on your Mac, then get a two terabyte SSD. So the rule of thumb is to double the amount of size that you have on your Mac in order to buy the appropriate SSD drive. Now there are many and many SSDs and hard drives out there you can buy, so that's why I have created an extended article which you can go through and see some options and what kind of hard drive or SSD drive you need to get for this purpose. I highly encourage you to get an SSD drive, which I also explain in more details what they are and what kind of SSDs you need to buy. And if you scroll all the bottom to the article after uh, after all the theory, after all the theoretical stuff, which I highly recommend you to read, to have a read of them. Uh, you'll see some of my best recommendations of which external storage devices to get. Now, if you scroll even further down, you'll see that I mentioned the SSD drive that I just uh, showed you. If you scroll even further down, you'll see that you have even more options regarding SSDs. So definitely take the time to pick up the perfect hard drive or SSD in case you don't have a spare one. Now, once you get in your hands a hard drive, go ahead and connect it to your computer. Once your external hard drive has been recognized by your Mac, then simply go to settings, go to where it says 10 machine, and from here you need to select your disk. Now as you can see, I have already done it, but all you need to do is to simply select, click on select disk, and then choose the external hard drive that you have inserted. Then press on use disk, and Time Machine will ask you to reset your external hard drive. Definitely choose yes, and then a backup will be performed to your external hard drive within about two minutes. Now this is very cool and very convenient because you can leave your external hard drive connected to your computer and then every hour your Mac is going to perform automatic updates to your external hard drive. So this is going to definitely take some time and once it's done, assume that it's done here, you can go ahead and disconnect your device from your Mac and once that's done, we're ready to move on with the factory reset process. So first of all, go to the app logo top left and then just press on restart. And once your Mac reboots, once you hear the beep, press hold down command and R key at the same time. You may release the keys once you see the menu or the progress screen. Now from here, you may need to log in, you may need to enter your password or log in and stuff like that. If you don't, then you should see the screen just like this. Now what we need to do is to go on this utility Press on continue. And from here, just ignore where, where it says external devices. We don't need to deal with any of those because these are all devices that you have connected externally, for example, an SD card or an external hard drive. So just ignore them from now. What we need to do is where it says internal. So what you need to do from now is to go on where it says erase. And what we need to do is to erase the hard drive. So we're gonna select it, we're gonna go to where it says erase, and I'm gonna leave the name as, as it is just like this, and I'm gonna press on erase. Now please keep in mind that, that this process is irreversible, so there is no way to undo unless you have the backup and you want to restore the backup back on your Mac, that's possible, but there's no way to undo this. Press on done once it's done, and, in my, and I'm gonna do the same thing on SSD data. So I'm gonna select it, go to erase, and I'm just gonna do erase. Mm -hmm. 
Once we're done pressing done, And once you're done with this process, then you may exit this utility. And now you have a brand new Mac, basically. So now what you can do, you can go ahead and reinstall macOS, or you can just sell it because there's pretty much nothing in your Mac right now. But let's say you wanted to reinstall macOS. So we're just gonna select it. I'm gonna press on continue. Then you press on continue. And then you should end up with the uh, installation screen after following the steps. And then you're gonna to have to follow the exact same steps as you did when you bought your Mac for the first time. So you're gonna to have to agree here. You're gonna to have to agree. You're gonna to have to select your hard drive where you want to install it. Press on continue. Now if you follow all these steps, you're gonna end up with a brand new Mac OS in order to use for yourself or as we discussed, to sell your Mac in eBay or any other uh, online shopping website and by following the steps once you reach the migration step you'll be able to restore all of the data back to your Mac if you want to or you can do this at a later stage whenever you decide on that note that's everything about this video now feel free to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and you found this video helpful don't forget to let me know if you have any questions by dropping a comment down in the comment section below Feel free to send this video to your friends if they want a solid advice on how to reset their Macs. And most important, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell right next to it in order to be the first one to be notified of our latest videos. Thanks for watching guys, as always, I will see you in my next video.